Um, all right, we can actually get down to it. Hello, all. We're going to talk about quite a movie. This is the first feature-length animated film released in Japan, made in Japan, released in Japan, I should say, Momotaro's Sacred Sailors, also known as Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors, um, not available in the U.S. until, I think, like two years ago, when Funimation licensed the thing and released it on Blu-ray in a lovely print. Um, this is... Um, Released in 1945, and there's a hint as to its content. Uh, it is definitely not a... Um, it, it's, its themes are not subtle. I will put it that way. No. <laughs> yeah. It's about as subtle as a brick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what, kind of where I wanted to start, is this question of its, um, uh, its presentation. Because I think when you start watching it, it's immediately clear where it's going because uh, it opens with bucolic Japanese imagery the the Japanese countryside which is so lovely and full of birds flittering around um, and then you see and I, I want to know if you guys found the like the the visual character designs um, effective having these sort of anthropomorphic characters in like uniforms um, they were creepy, Brent. They were just <laughs> creepy. <laughs> the yeah. pheasant, not so much, mm. but the bear sometimes, the, the inconsistencies with the animation, its eyes were looking different directions. <laughs> and then the monkey, just the monkey, the monkey trying to talk. It's like, I think there was, they did the lip flaps before they had the script. Mm -hmm. Because there were moments in there where the monkey's mouth is moving and there's nothing coming out of it. I'm like, oh, oh this is really creepy. <laughs> Yeah, because the monkey just and they did the close shots of the face. Oh so yeah. It's yeah, all the time. Monkey going, and it's just really weird going. Oh, <laughs> hi. And you're just like, no, yeah. no. <laughs> but but and it, and it's and, and Brent, you're right. It, it starts as beautiful. It actually really is a well for the technology. Yep. It was a really yep. well done scene mm -hmm. of of the of the nature and you clouds. You were in the background. Mount yeah. Fuji. You definitely. Yeah, you're definitely supposed to feel if you were Japanese, this is home, the homeland, this is what we're protecting, this is what we're doing. And you had the, the characters walk through, you know, the field and they uh, you know, as they're walking through it, you know, in their in their sailor uniforms, which was at first you're like, Okay, this is all really kinda cute and all, but then as they go in their separate directions, it all kind of falls apart a little bit because mm -hmm. Particularly with the pheasant, because suddenly, you know, who you are talking about soldiers <laughs> dealing with technology, and suddenly the pheasant's like back in the tree, and he's just like, oh, the my young ones are hungry, let me give them pickles. And then they just like revert to animalism, and yeah. like, okay, gotta go, gotta go. I'm gonna speed them out of my mouth, and I gotta go. And it, it, it was, it was definitely, but it, you know, when you saw it though, it was definitely aimed, you can tell, okay, this is definitely aimed at kids and their parents. Because they they did look cute. That's the thing. Is yeah. that at a certain point, they did look cute in mm -hmm. in those things. They're like you know a little cheapy stuff, and you think, oh okay, and you're misled by the way. Because like again, I had thought I'd seen this movie before, mm -hmm. but I, I, I guess I didn't because of what happens later on. Mm -hmm. But at first, you think that they're like you know maybe the chibi characters, cute characters that are, are support people, you know, like mm -hmm. supporting the planes and stuff like that, and not actual soldiers. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I had read a breakdown of this that said the film fits neatly into a three-part, three-act. Mm -hmm. That act one is the, and they ran through the, what happened in act one, but you can sort of put a synopsis on it and call it Japan as pure, wholesome, and civic-oriented. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. So that yep. you get this, you know, everybody lives in a village. Mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is this agrarian rural nature and of course everything's you know within eyesight of Mount Fuji <laughs> you know. yeah because apparently all of Japan lives right at the base of Mount Fuji Correct. Um, <laughs> but it, the, the thing I find very interesting in that first third mm -hmm. is the bucolic nature of it certainly mm -hmm. but it's also this really bizarre authoritarian concept of back to the land mm -hmm. that yes. really is extant from 
heaven knows what reason, particularly in the 1930s, that, you know, you have European uh, powers that are looking for Lebensraum to the east, and you have uh, Asian powers looking for Lebensraum to the west. So they're converging to the middle, but it, it's this odd idea of not a high-tech industrialized society. No, you're you're hearkening back to this, oh, the beauty of this long country road, and off in the distance, there's like four buildings. <laughs> right. Well, That's my village, versus like, Hey, it's Tokyo, this giant metropolitan area, Yokohama, uh, uh, right. works making mm. ships and aircraft and all kinds of heavy industry that you're instead turning the, the view away from that to be like, oh, no, 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 no. It's all about being back to the land, the native soil, blood and earth. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Blut und Erde. Yeah. Okay. Which, is, which is also interesting when you think, and... Um, Japan had a very robust cinema uh, industry from very early on, but still, you think, where is this going to play? Probably not in you know the Japanese version of Peoria. It's going to play in Tokyo, Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka and all, all the big cities. Um, yeah, you know you're not going to have a big movie theater out in in uh, Kakunodate. So it's very interesting that it's it's appealing to folks who are probably not watching the movie that much. Um, all right. And yeah. I mean, arguably, you could have theoretically the the propaganda department run out to like mm, a four true. village area and say, "We're going to meet at the halfway point from all four of your villages, and we're going to put this projector up and a screen in the trees, yep. and we're going to watch this because this is production that you're meant to see." There's, so, but you you most, are supposed to see this. Right. <laughs> but mo yeah. most of the time, you're 100 percent correct. These are going to be city dwellers and yeah. people who have the ability to get to a cinema and arguably disposable mm. income because the yeah. agrarian lifestyle they're portraying in this. <laughs> the kids are wearing yeah. dickies. They have no clothing. Mm. They're just yeah. they got this right. thing with a little rising sun on their stomach, and they're running around. It's like they don't even have pants on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here you got these guys well, who are like, I, yeah, you know, we're military. We've got our uniforms and our insignia on, and everybody else is wearing like, you know, a diaper. <laughs> well, the, this? Well, the, the interesting thing is, is that um, right before the Meiji Restoration, mm. and I, this is what it made me think of as I was watching the, the, the first third, as you're saying. Mm. Um, is that a lot of people want they oppose the modernization of Japan True. and that right. was part of the Meiji restoration was saying no we have to do this mm. well some of the moderates like uh, you know um, we talked about this guy Saito Takamori mm. who was uh, the head of the Satsuma province mm. he didn't want modernization for for Japan either like he liked he did, he hated trains like he mm. hated the very concept of trains but he was all for a technologically advanced military. Uh, and the idea was his, his, his concept was that, you know, we do have to accept the fact that we're going to have to deal with modern technology, but in terms of protecting this thing. Uh, and that's what I got from the first third of the movie was yeah. that, you know, the, the, these are humble little four building villages and they're all wearing, you know, diapers. They really <laughs> did look like diapers, by the way. And, and, you know, it's just kind of running around being very agrarian. You know, there's that whole scene where the village comes together and saves yep. the, to save the, Santa. Little, the little, yeah. to save Santa. To save <laughs> Santa. Santa. Which yeah. I thought was a translation error. I'm like, is it Sunda? <laughs> like D-A? Or is literally, are they out to save Santa? In which <laughs> case, that <laughs> sends a totally different message. So here you have this have this beautiful imagery of the motherland, the home, the fatherland, whatever you want to call it, and this this idea of the village. Everyone's happy in the village, and they're all sharing, and they're all together. And when something bad happens, the people come together. It doesn't matter if it's your kid, because remember the cat. Is it the cat? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Leaps and bounds over everyone yeah. to save someone who was his 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 relative, mm -hmm. but you know that was part of the village. Yep. So, you know, that's so I got a very strong sense of, OK, we're protecting this of Japan, yep. even though, as you pointed out, it's really you have Yokohama shipworks, you've got Tokyo <laughs> going on over here. Yeah. You got all this industry industry at this point, just turning out whatever they can make just to save what they can. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's one of the interesting things watching them. You know, if you go in knowing it's a you know propaganda film, it's kind of a hard left turn when you come in and it's immediately just saving the the kid in the village who doesn't even look. I mean, the, the river doesn't look particularly dangerous even. Um, uh, they show the Except waterfall. The actually. Ob- yeah, the oddly placed <laughs> giant Victoria Falls in the middle of Japan. <laughs> and the and mind you, the child when he got a hold of the hat mm. was in the river in like. Two and a half seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, you have, like, a full-on five minutes of half the village running <laughs> through the field where it's like, why don't you guys just, like, go to where the kid fell in and swim? You know? That's, like, two <laughs> seconds away from where you just were. <laughs> like, yeah. What's going on? Um, and, and they were told that by a bird? Like, an actual bird, yeah. not a humanoid bird? Which is, I, I, mm, mm, I don't know. Um, well, it's like the pheasant family. The pheasant yeah. in his navy uniform, and yet the pheasant parent, the yeah. other parent, I guess, mm-hmm. is a full-on pheasant. There's no mm-hmm. clothing. They're, yeah. they're right. not wearing anything. <laughs> they're just bringing stuff back and forth, and it's like, uh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Why are there regular birds in the sky <laughs> tweetering along and, and flying around, mm-hmm. and yet the pheasant bird is it is actually in a sailor uniform? Yeah. Well, and then we transition to the island. And Act Two, where we do absolutely see like animal animals, you know, squirrels and elephants and rhinoceroses, doing all work together, all, all this together, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, able to talk apparently, and you know, yeah. have all the intelligence yeah. and everyone else, and, and sing. Oh, do they sing? Um, gleefully, <laughs> gleefully. Occupation is fun. <laughs> Occupation's good for everyone. This is. This is where I started getting I, angry I I, at this film. And it's not hard to see why, because, you know, it's like, okay, the, the natives of this island that they moved to, you know, as they show kind of the transition of here's where we're going to make, where we're going to make the airfield. And then they go to the island and they're all excited that Japanese are coming to take us over. And isn't this wonderful? <laughs> and I'm so happy about this. And there's a great lyric in there where they go, and the best thing is that they, they, they look like us, but we kind of don't look like them, and that's okay. Yeah. You're just like going, oh, oh, ain't that fun? Okay. Wow, we're we're acknowledging our second class citizenship. All right, mm-hmm. great. Well, it's it's always great when you know somebody comes into your your homeland and makes you a forced labor. It's just apparently it's the yeah, best right. thing ever. It's the thing ever. Mm-hmm. But that's where in part you know part two the middle piece is. Um, if you want to just put a spin on it, yeah. it's Japan as the bringer of culture mm-hmm. and the bringer mm-hmm. of order. Yeah. Because when they show up and they're going to lay out this airfield, it's all just jungle. Mm-hmm. You know, native people living in a jungle, and that's not orderly. And that's not, you know, that's not as it should be. And yet here comes the Japanese. They're going to teach mm-hmm. people to, to speak and read Japanese. They're going to bring order to the island itself and order to the people themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's great uh, with that classroom scene. Yeah. That classroom scene. Where yeah. yeah. They show up and the poor cat soldier is trying to teach them and he and you know he just wants to take that stick and just start smacking the heck. Oh yeah. <laughs> but they're sitting there and they're like going, they're like going, Okay, we're you know what? Guess what? We're too stupid to understand all this, so we're just gonna play around here. Mm-hmm. And make and noises so that, and scream. And make noise yeah. and, and run around and all this stuff and then one of his compatriots goes, oh, you know what? You have to treat them like they're our children. Mm-hmm. So since they're our children, since we've come in, we have responsibility and ownership over our children. So we must, we must teach them. What better way to teach the Japanese alphabet to these lettered creatures than by singing a child's song? Yo. Yes, which then the children yeah. watching the movie and the audience can sing along to. Sing along with, no. Yep. And feel like they're part of the movie, and they're part of you know educating those poor illiterate you know foreigners. It's creepy. It's really, really creepy. And then, and then they, yeah. they start going, "Oh, and these people are so wonderful for changing our culture and our illiterate ways. Let's feed them and get it's our responsibility <laughs> to feed them and give them our food yeah. because mm-hmm. we're so grateful." And to that point, uh, that that happened in Papua New Guinea. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that also ties into something in Act One, where 
you know, these sailors come back and they start talking to all the kids about, you know, what it's like being a soldier. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. I get to fly around. It's wonderful. Boom, all these boom, yeah. boom, boom. Taka, taka, taka. Oh, what and, the hell is this? And any of you can learn to do it. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. <laughs> any of you can learn. Yep. And then, they, yeah. and then they go to the island, and, you know, it's definitely not on Retorio Noble Deaths with, you know, malaria and, and, you know, one grain of rice per week. Um, you know, right. it's, it's fruit, and they're giving you all this food, and it's Hundreds. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And melons and bananas. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just a wonderful life. And, and the Navy is so great. The Army is so great. The Air Force is so great. You don't have, like in real life, a sergeant or a corporal that beats the crap out of you every day. Oh, they're all really that was great. The thing. They're yeah, when guys. when Momtaro shows up as the captain, he's just the oh, greatest God. guy, and mm -hmm. everything's super cool. And it's like, I did find it very uncomfortable that the order to scramble when they're the planes, there's a plane coming in, they're getting ready mm -hmm. for everything. It really, it was at that point, it just kind of hit me that everybody's voices are children. Yes, yes. They're all When you get into the third act, when we got into the third act, when we get to talking about the third act, that's where I started. Yeah, I'm I was just, getting a little creeped like, out at this uh, point. But by the time the third act, you're like, oh, yeah, no. They no, got no, all no, bunch no. of kids to do this mm -hmm. stuff. And it's just like, mm -hmm. uh, and all mm -hmm. of the sound, which it, it, Disney sounds at that time were uh, they felt like more ingrained to the actual sh to the show to the film well, so, and yeah. this is yeah. like entirely studio well, this... like every single noise is like you could see a guy at a sound table going <laughs> and it's uh, yeah. like well it's also interesting cuz apparently they couldn't mix because you got either dialogue or sound effects yeah. or music right. never any of those all together at the same time which gives it a really awkward quality Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I love the fact that the birds chirping was like a water whistle, like you, you'd see in like a vaudeville yeah. show. It's like, like, what are you, really? You know, when they're yeah. running, you can tell it's somebody with like padded something on like a wood floor going, yeah. and it's just like, wow, this is terribly, terribly cheap sound effects. Mm -hmm. Like, but, you know, and, it's and, during the war, so. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have YouTube back then where you could curse the uh, yeah curse the, the rate where you're getting because at one point I was like going, is that, what is that blob? It yeah. was, oh, it's the bear. It's the bear <laughs> with the weird the eye. Okay. Did you guys notice that when they were having the air crews deplane mm -hmm. and they're all sort of lining up, they're getting organized, mm -hmm. did you notice the very intentional shot of hundreds of air crew bags? Yep. Yeah. Yep. As if to non-verbally say, look how huge our Air Force is. Yeah. There's is. all these Air Force bags. There's like uh, even though we're only seeing like maybe twenty five individual characters in any of this given mm -hmm. shot, there's hundreds of these bags. Look, the Air Force is huge. Yep. <laughs> like, ah, nice non verbal cue. Thank you. Well and it's weird because I saw that and I got the distinct image of gravestones. Ooh. I don't think it was intentional, but yeah. I could not get that out of my head. Well, no, hindsight was, being twenty twenty. Exactly, you know yes. Yeah. At the time, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it was much more forward-looking. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I mean, the image I got was, was definitely like one, oh, these are the bags they send home after the mm. mm -hmm. day. Body bags, yeah. But, it, but, I think it's, but I think it's more along the lines of you know, what you're talking about, which is, you know, hey, it's you know, huge. We are on Look how massive game. our forces are. Uh, yeah. We have a whole island full of chibi warriors, monkey warriors. Here you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And their and their planes, which they did a really good job mechanically. Even though, was, I was you know, say, a lot of I... other stuff was kind of goofy. The planes, actually, when they got down to oh, some yeah. of the nitty gritty of it, they were actually really well done. Well, I was like, hmm. that was their requirement. Shot. Um, like that, 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 that was one of the things where apparently they were told, no, 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 like you're going to get these right. Um, and also wow. apparently from what I was, I was reading, um, they, they got reference. 
Like, they got film to study of planes taking off and planes landing and all this footage shot by the Japanese military. And wow. it was an animator's dream, you know, to actually have something that you can reference and say, okay, this is exactly how it looks and all that. So they were kind of like kids in a candy store in that sense of, of great, we can actually make something look good in this damn film. Um, you know? <laughs> Gosh. We can do more than backgrounds because everything else going on sucks. Yeah. yeah it's just from, yeah. from aircraft. Although, I, I, I should say, I, sh I should uh, uh, back up on that. Um, you know, like we were saying, the like the nature animation is gorgeous. The backgrounds are very well done. The character animation is just... I mean, there are times when they walk at you and they just kind of do this. Mm. And they just kind of... Ah, da, 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 and their arms are just going all over the place. And it's just... I, what? I, I, you're, you're just like going... <laughs> this is just that cartoon. This, this is that Betty Boop cartoon like, I've seen. It. Yeah, it's not squash yeah. and stretch done done yeah. American style. No, um, <laughs> interesting. But getting back to the whole, you know, our giant army. Did you notice this in that, that scene where they send the plane out on reconnaissance, and it comes back all shot up? Yeah, with um, one part of the wing yeah, missing. Right, right, yes, and apparently it yeah. still flies with only half a wing. Absolutely oh, awesome. And you notice they came back and they said, uh, you know, we returned, one of our guys died. But the plane got all beat up. And they spent all this time looking at how beat up the plane was. Never, no mention of the guy who died. Just, oh. eh, whatever. You know? except, except for that one little bullet hole in the window. Yeah, mm -hmm. where it's like a really evident, like, where somebody's head would be. Yeah. <laughs> Bullseye <laughs> shot, like, yikes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but that, again, there's the, your the unspoken is that... Even entirely wrecked, a fine mm -hmm. Japanese aircraft can mm -hmm. make it back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Where our, <laughs> yeah, our our aircraft are just are just fantastic. They they hold together very well. Don't listen to the press. Um, <laughs> not the press is yeah. mentioning that, but anyway. Um, I'm sure the press said exactly the same thing. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it's, it's very true. Tokyo Shimbun Daily, or you know, whatever, <laughs> totally agreed with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we interrupt your story for another animated film inserted into the middle of our movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this was another very <laughs> subtle work. <laughs> yeah. <It's a> break. <laughs> well, I like the fact that, they, that what they're referencing doesn't have, like, the ship they're using is like the Mayflower. <laughs> and it's like Commodore Perry showed up in like a steam driven sailing ship. It doesn't look anything well, like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh, interesting. Actually, what they, what they were actually referencing to. It's gotta was, be the Portuguese. Uh, the, it was the Portuguese takeover of Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Dutch East Indies. Goa. Yeah, it's the Goa, uh, Goa, I think the Kingdom of Goa that they were right. referring to, I think, mm -hmm. was Papua New Guinea. And, um, that's what the Dutch. Uh, the, that's what the um, actually the Portuguese did, and they just walked in there because they were uh, very, not very good people. Uh, <laughs> and that's pretty much that. But when they show they when they show that coin, it says one C. Now, to me, and the and yeah. the and the symbol on it, it looked like it was one crown, mm. which a would kroner. be an English reference. Uh, okay. It would be a K if it was a kroner. Okay. Mm. So that's what I was kind of looking at. I'm like, hmm. Well, I think this might be sort of mixing the message because if it's yeah. if it's England, it would be a one crown, one sovereign mm -hmm. crown, which would blend nicely with the fact that they were fighting the English and the Americans. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest, I think they were just saying all white people yeah. are and don't trust them, and mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're pirates gonna, apparently. Yeah, parrot, pirates, mm -hmm. and they're gonna destroy everything that you own i thought they were you know and i thought it was an interesting reference to deja mode where they're like i just we just need one little piece of land, mm -hmm. just one piece of land. yeah yep totally um it's a while and, well and, um, and according to our commercial law we now have to take you over <laughs> like, what uh, um i'm not sure that how that worked but uh this week i just watched uh, the adventures of prince ahmed which is the oldest surviving feature like animated film and uh, 1925, I think, um, and German, and it's all um, silhouette. And it's all done exactly the same way, or very similar. Not, I wouldn't say it's similar. It's basically paper cutouts, but fully animated cutouts. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, okay. And uh, um, 
And like that, that was definitely a thing in like the twenties and so forth of this this style. And so I wonder if it wasn't also just kind of saying, okay, we need to tell this story. We need a different style. So let's go to this other thing. It's still popular. People know what it is. People have seen this somewhere else. Um, just kind of give it that that extra flair um, because it was it's <laughs> it is Im- legitimately impressive the expressiveness of not only the the characters in there but also of the like the facial features. Like, right. th- those are Portuguese people. Like, it's just, mm, and it just in a little outline. Like, they did an amazing job there. Um, well, I thought it was interesting with the natives when, they're, when they were saying, oh, you know, the natives began to panic and they went and talked to the king. The sort of way that they were moving on that mm-hmm. balcony mm-hmm. When, the, when, the, when the foreigner devils are showing up, yeah. it almost looked like Thai silhouette. Puppetry, mm, yeah. mm-hmm. because they're they're sort they're of the like doing arms. this kind yeah. of weird yeah. kind of body movement where it's like it looks like they're hinged in various ways as they run yeah. off and i'm like hmm. well and then when you see that the pirates it almost looks like rotoscoped it looks like you know somebody took an mgm film and then just like colored over it yeah or something. as the guys mm-hmm. sort of sauntering up the, mm-hmm. the and they're like raising the, 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 the stuff and all that yeah. and the, the ropes so I don't know what was going on there. I don't know, you know what sources they may have had, but it definitely definitely felt like it was a very you know, deliberate artistic choice. Um, but yeah, and then and then it ends with literally, you know, this you know, Star Wars temple in the jungle, um, you know, with with this sign saying, "And the Japanese will save them someday." someday. Like, wow, <laughs> brick. You know, people, just, people, so far so distant next. from you that really weren't looking for you to show up. <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> magically save them thanks to prophecy. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the best, yeah, that was not that was not a subtle black ship <laughs> Commodore no, Carroll moment. No, no. <laughs> and it's weird because, and I'd love to find it, it. It feels like that was a propaganda film that they made separately. Because it doesn't doesn't yeah, fit into box, anything box, else. Box, 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 box. Yeah, um, and they just kind of shoved it. And I I wonder if and I have to look at the running time, um, if it was literally like to make it feature length. Like you know, we we produced forty eight minutes. Let's insert this other thing that we made so as to you know broaden it out to be long enough. I don't know. Um, well, so you'd have to find a compendium of what. Uh, propaganda animation was made during the war to figure out whether oh, that's gonna that be easy. was a piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That'd be because I got to figure this started production in '42, mm. and it 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 premiered in '45. So mm. somewhere in there, you know, would it have been a clip of something that they made in '41 mm. or '40 mm. that they used with the black ship reference, or was it somewhere as they were moving forward they produced that clip on the side and said, let's mm. just dump that in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good luck trying to figure that out. <laughs> I, I do not know. Um, <laughs> Brent, then, you are the archaeologist. Oh, this is you true. Are, yes. You're supposed will, to know will, how to figure out this stuff. Do my research. Um, but yeah, so, so when we come back from that to... Um, uh, part three. Part three, trilogy, yes. Which is Japan as liberator and uh, preserver of culture and peace. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and 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 uh, you, you want to talk about rotoscoping? Yeah. They wholly, and I'm pretty damn sure, wholly borrowed those paratrooping mm-hmm. moments mm-hmm. from German propaganda films. Wow. Of Germans paratrooping out of mm-hmm. Ju 52s, mm-hmm. because the way they're sort of tumbling out and the way that they're moving, it's like, uh, well, it was, I don't think that's no. That looks really familiar. Mm-hmm. You got a point there because they made a whole effort to show beginning to end jumping out of the plane. Oh, yeah. They went into detail yeah. with, with the D-ring going into the mm-hmm. on, onto the rail yeah. and then how that moved forward. Mm-hmm. Like, because there was a whole 10 second segment that I was surprised with at yeah. showing it, like, going forward. Yeah. Going forward, going forward. Oh, and yeah. showing like, the, the buzzer yeah. and, like, this sound right. means, you know, get up. This sound means jump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hook up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, the the um, Wachenschau that shows the mm. paratroop, uh, Kurt Student's paratroop invasion of Crete. Mm. That there's a lot of stuff like that. The guys are hooking up and they stand at the door and they jump out. <laughs> just like they're jumping out. I'm mm. like, 
Okay, it would not have been impossible for you to have seen those movies. I mean, that would oh, have yeah. been something that would have probably been shipped across to the German consulate and that people would have seen. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, and, it, and it's, it's fascinating because, you know, you, you've had all this military stuff, very much as prep, and you move into, in, into combat, and it is... <laughs> it's weird because the movie is just preparation, preparation, preparation. We're going to get there, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. And then you have the battle. And, uh, and that's where I went. That's where I just went, oh no, the chibis really are killing people. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And because, and tanks. because again, you're talking about how it's all, you know, child's voices that are yeah. shouting off the charge, fire. They're going up against the, the, the you know, I guess the, the, the British, I think is what they were actually yes. uh, looking at. And it, and it reminded me of, um, I forget what the, uh, what the British port in Indonesia was that fell to the Japanese earlier in the war. But, uh, Singapore? Yeah. Was it Singapore? Because there was clearly those three buildings meant something. Mm. I forget what mm-hmm. it did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, as the, 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 these chibi kids earlier in the movies, the songs, the singing, the idyllic things and beauty and all this stuff, and suddenly their faces are hardened, mm-hmm. and you see movements of the bayonet, and worse is that you don't see the death. Yeah, the, you hear the scream. on a tank thing. Yeah, that's just... And you hear the scream like, from uh, inside, and it's not like a Wilhelm scream because it hadn't happened yet. <laughs> but... It was a blood curdling, yeah. like I'm being murdered, killed, death in the most horrific way. Ah! Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. And then Chibis are just like, <laughs> no more, no more. Yep. And they keep going. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yep. And you're just like, and you know, of course, you get the whole lot concept of child soldiers in your head. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh. <laughs> and, you know, it must be remembered that at the time, well, by the time the movie came out, you know, the military leadership was talking about how Japan might have to be defended down to the last man, woman, and child. So yeah. they could be preparing that generation for that. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and like their European counterparts, you already had schoolgirls and schoolboys already enlisted into manufacturing processes mm-hmm. and and any kind Completely. of means of yeah. you know farming to get Production. more food, anything to get guys in the field and those vacancies were filled by kids yep absolutely yeah um but then you know they get to the actual compound and thankfully the british are all morons um and they all yeah, just, just running just around, run around like crazy yes um, playing Save cards, cards. Save and I, yeah, I love, yeah, I love that symbolism. That oh, they're just playing these games. They're not really serious. Um, they're, they're just gambling, shiftless people who are mm-hmm. just no good, yep. no good, Nick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... And, and for, for, for some reason, they can't talk. Right? Well, you see, I, 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 that's, I, I, I'm, it's, I, I, and you're just like, oh my god, spit it out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. after a while and you're just like you're just like but it's it's to that point it's just like they're incompetent because mama taro is no mm-hmm. now fourth white you need the you turnover get, control we are the victors you are the losers mm-hmm. do what we say yeah. do it now well, see and then here's an interesting part about their crazy conversation that's going on mama taro being so like you mm-hmm. know stern that the british first of all they have oni horns Oh, yeah. On their yeah. Hands. yeah. Literally foreign devils. Yeah. Then, as they're talking to him, uh, uh, I don't have control of the airfield. Uh, bu- 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 uh. Okay, that's fine. And then they whisper to each other, well, we should, should we stall for time? We should bluff? We're winning the war anyway. Right. So we just need to hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what did you? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I'm like, hold on. Mm-hmm. If Now, if you guys did this in exact order so part one was done started mm. it was started 1942 mm-hmm. then maybe part two is 43 44 and then part three is now the last bit of production you're doing and it's right before you know the end of the war is coming it's like was that just a tacit admission that you lost the war mm. no the military would never <laughs> allow that no and yet it's it's, it's not even mumbled mm. i mean it's whispered between them but it's 
they are very aware of the fact that, wow, here's your enemy saying they already won the war and they're just stalling for time. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. Okay, so that tells me you're you know what's coming. Oh yeah. And that apparently the censors either didn't care or just didn't notice it because it well, was in English. Well, and I, I also suspect that it was... Um, it, it, and it, good English, possibly. by the way. Yeah, well, well that's another uh, thing we'll get to odd, in a second. Oddly good English. Um, the um, I took that as basically them sending the message that even if we, the Japanese, are losing, even if everything is going against us, we still fight, we still get to go down, we still, you know, it doesn't matter you know, how the war is going, we still, you know, take to the beaches. Um, it is... Th- doesn't matter if we're losing, we're still fighting. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Hardly motivational. <laughs> it is strongly theorized that the um, English voice actors in this movie were prisoners of war. Um, that were pressed into doing this, hopefully for a better, you know, treatment. Um, but I, I can't imagine anyone in Japan being able to speak, you know, uh, English that fluently and that, that accurately yeah. to, like, the, the British inflection as well, too, right? Like, it's just, yeah. yeah. Um, it's really interesting. Um, um, but, yeah, no, ab- absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's remarkable. And also, did you know that they, um, not only did they defeat the, the, uh, the, uh, British, they also defeat, um... Uh, Popeye and Bluto. Yeah, they miss Popeye and Bluto. Yeah, on that? <laughs> and, uh, uh, Bluto and Popeye are two of the um, the enemies, and a, a, a an empty can of spinach uh, falls down at Popeye's feet. Yeah. Oh dang! I totally <laughs> totally zoned out. On that. Wow. So it's like, yeah, no, you know, Western capitalism. I was taking, all I was the taking notes. I mean. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was quick. Um, well, that movie was very hopeful because as the kids back home, back in the Placid Village, are going, wanting to do their ta- part in their training, and uh, Santa, little Santa, who almost drowned, <laughs> scared in a tree, ready to jump, you know, jump down and roll, and but then he realizes that what he's looking at is America. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna jump. Yeah. <sighs> Yep. And then stamp on it. Oh, oh. Yeah, my, yeah. Little, my little tiny monkey feet. Monkey feet. <laughs> subtle, very subtle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and also, let's just be honest. The the fact of Momotaro insisting on unconditional surrender, as like the whole point of that scene, is dang ironic. Like mm-hmm. I, you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but months later, just just a few months later, months later. Mm-hmm. You, could, you could almost say that they were aping the uh, Americans. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! Man. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> these sh- these jokes hardly tell themselves. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things I did look up, and I, I was trying to figure out. You know, it's Dutch East Indies. I'm, uh, you know, where is this sort of all kicking around? And I found a reference to it that, you know, Momotaro is Peach Boy. So he's the little little boy born of a giant peach floating down the river to an old man and an mm-hmm. old woman. I thought that was just that's the point of the story. Sort of like Bamboo mm-hmm. uh, Cutter who finds mm-hmm. the girl in the bamboo. Mm-hmm. You realize that in the, in the Momotaro, Momotaro legend... He conquered an island called oh. Onishima, Oni Island, or uh, Devil Island, yeah. which the British refer to as Devil Island. Yeah. Um, and that for and that Momotaro forced the local Oni to surrender and to um to submit to his authority. Mm. I'm like. Oh, it's interesting. So you guys, you guys pretty much borrowed the entirety of the Momotaro <laughs> story and just dropped it in yeah. there, and now you've got the British with Devil Island, and they're the Onis. I'm like, okay, so this makes that a even nice, you know, better little hook in there that people are be like, oh yeah, I know that story. Oh, mm. They're just British instead of regular Oni. <laughs> oh, how nice. <laughs> I feel comfortable hearing this propaganda message. Well, and that's the thing. <laughs> I, absolutely, I think that's, that's one of the ways they quote unquote got away with it. That you know. Um, I think as a parent, you know, even if you're kind of rolling your eyes at the war a little bit, uh, you hear, oh, it's a, it's a Momotaro story. Okay, like obviously there's going to be a propaganda element to it, but it's going to be a Momotaro story, fine, whatever. Um, and you go and you see that. Which, 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, Which I thought was very, it was interesting by, by 1945, by that, by that stage of the war. This last piece, again, if it's chronologically done, mm. this last piece, they have ground combat. They have tanks, they have a pillbox, they go up and physically grab the machine gun and pull it out of the pillbox, which, yep, Great, damn, yeah. damn brave of you, but wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you notice that for their air fleet, for all the air preparations, for the air cover that they have, yeah. for all the air operations, they never once show the Japanese planes bombing anything. True. Yeah. And I thought, I wonder if that's literally like well you know let's not do them bombing the island because our entire population is getting its ass handed to it <laughs> by firebombing like yeah. day and yeah. night mm-hmm. um yeah. let's yeah. try to like de-emphasize that and mm-hmm. we'll just look at the paratroopers yeah the paratroopers they don't they don't have to blow anything up until they're literally fighting on the ground so we'll just let's not make that a touch point and a you know <laughs> safe space moment yeah. trigger for uh, <laughs> for the population with bombing <laughs> You got a point there because when you do at, at the end of the victory, you, you, the, the victory yeah. over the island over the British, look at the weapons that they that they seized, um, mm. the control seized and took, took control over, and they are. If you look at them, they're like Maxim guns and things like that mm. that are towards the 1930s and the beginning of the war, mm. and you know the tanks when they show the tanks, they're showing, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> always uh, felt where the U.S. Marine mm. um, armored cars that were used in the Philippines for the insurrections after they after we took it from the Spanish. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the, a lot of the machinery was outdated. Yeah. Whereas the 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 machinery they were using was pretty, I guess, on spot. Right. I don't know if that was just to say that, oh, their technology is way behind or is or is it something that you're trying to a point you're leading to, which is. Is this actually in chronological order? Is this mm. is this movie in actual chronological order, or is there or is there a message? Well, I also suspect that the animators did not were not allowed access to anything about the American forces. So they had Foreign no weapons, idea yeah. what the tanks looked like, what the, what the guns looked like, and so they were just like, "Let's go down to the library," yeah. you know, was left of it, and pull out a book about you know, um, World War One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, you think of the the tanks as they're rumbling along. They don't have any heavy weapons. They have a machine gun. And it's like wow, that's what, that's it's a what, box, yeah. sort of like the and you know again weird. But <laughs> the German early tank version was a giant box with machine guns. Yeah, like at least the British Mark fours or whatever they had. You know, three or four pounder guns on the side and machine guns as well. But the the German early version tanks were just machine guns in a big box. <laughs> so it's like, that's what that yeah. looks like. And I mm-hmm. took it to be, first of all, look at the spoils of war that we've got all this stuff. But also, I think, Steve, there is an element in that. And again, it's another non-visual clue as like, here we are. We've got paratroopers. We've got these, you know, great aircraft. And, you know, the scene where you're looking at the propeller spinning as they're mm-hmm. flying through the air. It's like, yeah. you know, we've got all this high tech. And look at all this stuff that we captured. Use all this low-tech stuff. Mm -hmm. They could not have won because their stuff is inferior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, so I I think there's, they don't have access to the stuff to look at. They're also trying to draw, you know, the nice comparison Mm -hmm. that they're they're advanced in what they're doing and everybody else is kind of crap. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, you've got a lot going on in just that little, that bit there. Much less the fact that, you know, the, the assault on the tank as... Um, dramatic as it is, is drawn in a relatively cartoony style compared to the planes and all the detail of the planes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely feels like this is this is not as serious as we are. Um, it, you want to be wowed by Japanese equipment, you, right? You you just want to sort of pass pass off on foreign <laughs> stuff. Yeah, um, and it's it's so funny because you don't see, and I mean, there's no necessarily reason you would, but. I would expect a film like this to have all sorts of stuff about, you know, our manufacturing power, and you know, look at all of the, and you look at American propaganda, you know, but here are all the shells rolling off the assembly line and all that stuff, um, and they just completely ignore that for bucolic Japan and you know the the attack on Devil Island, um, and it's it's interesting how just kind of how focused they made the film, 
Uh, so I, I think you're right. I think that there's definitely a um, maybe not misdirection going on, but very very focused direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we do and don't show. Well, I, I think given for for the Japanese war economy, yeah. you you would never really, but for their shipyards and for their aircraft production, you never really got a sense that a lot of their munitions production mm. was up to the same kind of steam as you had sure. for European powers or yeah. the U.S. Mm-hmm. That, you know what I mean, having large assembly factories of all the Panzer tanks where you just mm. see the overhead gantries bringing <laughs> right. turrets in and putting them down. Mm. Japanese tank production was really so Very small, small yeah. by comparison that you probably could get a small workshop with three of them being worked on with dudes like hammers hitting on them. It's like, <laughs> geez, that's not as impressive as the Germans. They got like 60 of them in there. <laughs> Look at the wind rises, you know, and how they're, they're building this, they're, they're designing this plane out in this, you know, um, hangar out in the middle of nowhere and just, you know, pencil and paper and protractors and all this stuff. And yeah. it's, you know, it's, it is definitely not, you know, what you'd expect from a, a German design team, you right. know, it, 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 or, technologically. Or the- the U.S. Um, design, uh, mm. th- there was one, I, I saw a snippet of it mm. eons ago, but it was talking about, I think it was the P-38 design. Mm. It, was a, it was a fighter aircraft yeah. design, I don't remember which one, but mm. they showed all these drafting tables. It was like a sort of warehouse-sized thing, and all you mm. saw was just drafting tables, and people, people sitting at drafting yeah. tables doing stuff. And it's like, you watch the wind rises, and it's just like, <laughs> there's like, Three people. <laughs> Three people at a dressing like, table. And, it, and, it just like, see, see, look what I do. And it's like versus you know the other powers where it's like you have people that are not drafting the whole aircraft at one time. You have one major draft, and these people are just designing the gear ratio. That's all right. they're doing. Yep. You got yeah. ninety people just trying to figure out how the landing gear goes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and over in this other one, you got one guy who's like, I can design all of them. <laughs> like, sure you can, honey. You just keep trying. Mm-hmm. Any amazing so, thing you know, did. Yeah, and a beautiful aircraft that mm-hmm. it was. Um, but yeah, unfortunate. But. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that, that, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, and it's it, it's funny because you you watch a movie like this and you know you going in you can do some propaganda you know you know um, you you have a sense of what it's gonna gonna be but I I don't remember the first time I, I watched this I got to that last shot and I literally like leaned back in my chair and started laughing uproariously uh, <laughs> because it's not just, I think what you're supposed to do no <laughs> um, because it is just Kem Pei Tai would not be happy <laughs> no. Uh, uh, because it is just so blatant. It, it is so over the top and in your face with a propaganda message. And because it adds things like, you know, the, the child voices and all the other stuff, it pushes it beyond, you know, just strong propaganda into this, this area of just creepiness that makes it hard to take seriously, really. When, when you watch the when you watch the German propaganda movies, and you have the Wagner in the background, and you have these amazing um, camera shots over oh. you know before buildings, and they actually have the planes going over mm. the forest, yeah. the villages, then the city, and then hitting the sea, and then you know the whole idea of this is Germany, and and it's, this is um, not to quote the Ramstein song, but you know this is Germany, and and this is you know. Of course, and and yeah, and, and, but it's just heavy, and it's there, and and you feel this uplift, and mm. you're supposed to feel this uplift, and you're just supposed to be, yes, yeah. Oh, in yeah. this, I, I agree with you. In this, you're just kind of watching this, and you're just like, this is the last gasp. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, how else are we going to prepare our people? You know, it's they're still talking about take. I mean. And at the end, they were still t- talking about taking it to the end, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, you know, before they before the emperor went ahead and did the, the broadcast, mm-hmm. but you know, this was their way of just saying, you know, how else are we going to reach out to the people and get them to be motivated for that one last push? Mm-hmm. And you know, Kurosawa was during this time mm-hmm. was making also propaganda films, you know, obviously live action propaganda films. Mm-hmm. Enough about production of shells. Ah, huh. that's actually how he, where he met his his wife. Actually, where, who was an Lucky. actor, 
what okay. was and um but you know was her even, was her it, name Shelly? Oh I gotta stop no, the you're folks. Just, I gotta stop it. Right. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I think I had an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, Go ahead. But, Go ahead. It's, it's, you know, but, you know, he was saying that towards the end there, you know, not only was it, you know, hard just because there's no resources to even make the movies, to, to mm, physically yeah. make them, um, but they were just running out of ways to say to the people who were already knowing that it was lost because look at the shrines, look at, mm. you know, how many you know, how many people are going to the shrines and how many deaths are, there's no, nobody's coming back and, you know, things are not, you know, there's that scene in the, in, in the movie where they're on the airplane eating the rice with a big cherry in the middle and, you know, that's plum pickle, oh, plum yeah. pump yeah. in the middle and there's nothing. Um, umaboshi, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Plum, yeah, umaboshi. Yeah. And, you know, he was saying that, you know, you can't, you know, what else are you going to do? And he said that the, the film's starting to backslide a little bit in terms of how do we get this message across because everybody knows yeah like i think course came this good came this close to saying we were you know just going to basically make a movie it's just going we're all going to die here's your rifle 10 rounds let's go you know? <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. well and i give it for this for for the format in which they did this and, if, and given the extensive period of time that they had to pull this together, which really made me wonder, looking at some of the quality of it, I know is the fact mm -hmm. that the, the extant copy that you could get to yeah. make copies to, mm -hmm. to distribute, that right. this... I, trying to make something that's vaguely timeless in a very limited experience... You know, it was going downhill from pretty much 43 on. 42 yeah. was probably the, the maximum extent that the That's Japanese the Empire yeah. controlled territory. Mm -hmm. And then everything after that, Doolittle Raid and on, is just, mm -hmm. it, things are going downhill. Boop, boop, boop. So they're making stuff, presumably with a lack of available paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? As they're going mm -hmm. forward, tracing paper and other kinds of, <clears throat> you know, tools to do this mm -hmm. are becoming scarcer right. as they're going on that they could have laid in like the Germans with a heavy propaganda message mm. that would have been extremely limited. Mm. But you could almost sever the first third of this mm. and take off the chrysanthemum symbol on his naval cap, just mm -hmm. blur that out, yeah. and you would just have a little romp. Yeah. And you could you could unhook this from the propaganda train. Yeah. By just changing some of the symbol, because he's just talking about, you know, instead of saying, oh, it's great to be in the military, you could say, oh, it's great to fly. Mm -hmm. And then he could right. just have that whole thing yeah, rolling yeah. around. Mm -hmm. You could unhook that, and it feels kind of like you didn't mm -hmm. lay heavily on the propaganda. You didn't just come out and, you know, sort of wag your finger at people and be like, don't surrender, don't quit, <laughs> just keep going till everybody's dead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was more it seemed like there was more kind of intent there to, to make this a gentle hand so that it had some kind of like, you know, this is not as bad as it could be. Things and, are going to be just kind of okay. And, and <laughs> like, who knows <laughs> if, you know, that wasn't the plan in 1942. And then as time went on, they're like, no, no, no. You know, this has to be more serious. This has to, this has to, you know, have a stronger message. And they just had to keep on, you know, but they like, but we already, you know, draw in the first 20 minutes, like we can't go, you know, yeah. um, and they just, you know, wove it, wove it more strongly in. Because uh, it, it certainly does, you know, I think, I think you're, ab you're absolutely right. It, it feels, the, the first 10 minutes of this film, of, uh, film feels completely different from the last 10 minutes of the film. Yeah. But even, I mean, even for the stupid caricature of the, of the, <laughs> of the British, you know, on Devil Island, um, even, even that, it, you know, it's not as heavy-handed as mm. it could have been because oh, yeah. they're portraying Momotaro as being stern with these people who are just so silly. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how. They can't control anything. <laughs> no, I will come in and I will bring order and I will bring justice. Mm -hmm. But they don't then show any kind of punishment. Yeah. I mean, you mm -hmm. don't see Momotaro saying, if you will not do this, mm -hmm. then I'm going to take out your lieutenant there and have him shot. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? And yeah. there are more than enough cases in all theaters of the war mm. where people not meeting demands had consequences. They It wasn't oh. just waiting for somebody to get their crap together and then everything's fine. Yes, we agree. We'll just surrender. You don't... You know what I mean? It's like... Mm. You, you don't see any of that... Um, uh, you don't see the, the, the completion of that battle, right? Like, you, the battle comes up, we see them negotiating, you don't see the defeated British. You don't see them occupying the, uh, the island. We just, you know, cutting right back to the, uh, the kids in Japan. I think it's a very interesting choice. Yeah, but I mean, but then that, you know, that still gives you that gentle kind of hand mm-hmm. to it. The la- I think the last bit is probably the most stark. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, the British are kind of goofy and stuff, but the little children playing at paratrooper and stomping on the map of the U.S., you don't, you know what I mean? You have the British portrayed as idiots, mm-hmm. but you know, you don't have anybody explicitly stomping on a British flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? But the last thing you see is a child with his little his little rising mm-hmm. sun dicky <laughs> hopping out of a tree and then stomping on America. It's like... Okay, that's a hard message. Yeah. You've just hard messaged me yeah. what your feeling is, what your opinion is. Everything else is kind of like, again, we're bringing justice, we're bringing order, we are fair but stern. Yeah, it's a funny thing. I think if with sm- relatively small changes, well, no, with significant changes, um, the I think everything probably up to the, uh, the assault on the British – could have been done, it could have come across and been presented as very much like an American or British war film, right? Like, it, everything in that feels, <clears throat> excuse me, very similar to that. Here's the lovely countryside, here are the soldiers going off to war, <clears throat> but it just become, it just goes over the top, and it adds all those other things to it, and all the other elements of, of, uh, of nationalism and uh, the, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're right. It, it just it it kind of undercuts those elements. Yeah. You know, it, it, listening to you talk about uh, about that, it reminded me of the uh, bridge on the River Kwai and how the Japanese treated the British differently than mm. the American prisoners. True. And that not just in that movie, but mm. in, historically. And, you know, I was kind of thinking, like, well, you know, not that they have a kinship with the British. Maybe they had a better understanding of the British. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, b- both of them are based out of monarchies. Both of them have had, you know, histories of totalitarianism through the monarchies and, mm-hmm. and that kind of order. And the British were, in a certain sense, orderly in their surrender and, you know, things of well, that nature. And also, let's not forget that, you know, in that whole conflict, uh, for uh, you know, and going back centuries, um, Japan had never really had any serious problems or, like, with the British. It was the Portuguese, it was Russia, it was, it was right, the U.S. Right, it was, right. Yeah. It was, and it was the U.S., you know, what you were talking about earlier, it was the U.S. Uh, coming in under the Perry, and we're the ones who basically just said... Yeah, we're 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 gonna open you up to the world, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, and so there's this kind of like that, as you're saying, that stern message at the end, where the kid is stomping on the U.S. Mm-hmm. because the U.S. is really the enemy. Yeah, mm-hmm. the real enemy, and that's the people that we really gotta prepare for. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna take out these all small fry. We're gonna take out the the British, but the Americans <laughs> are coming, so we gotta be prepared. Mm-hmm. Which is just so interesting because the the interwar period post world war 1 where japan was allied with the us with britain and you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. that we we're all on the same side that they the naval right. treaties and then the, mm-hmm. the naval cooperation between the us and japan up until the militarization of the 30s mm-hmm. you'd you know what i mean you'd think they would have been like oh you're the people we need to be with, and mm. you know, it's the British who are holding on to these colonies in Singapore and in Hong Kong, mm. and have the have right. the concession in Shanghai. That you know, they and the Europeans are the ones that are you know stealing the birthright mm. of the Greater East Asian Co Prosperity Sphere. They're the ones well, causing the problem. Let's not forget the Japanese had no right. problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they wanted to do the stealing, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else had already beat them to the point. Yeah, I see. 
Yeah. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that's just yeah. But then well, what do we know? Yeah. What do we know? Post World War One, the British also had plans drawn up just in the offhand chance there was a war with America, mm. even though we've been allied in our in World War One. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, eh, eh. Mm-hmm. yep. Fr- friendships like that only go so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also that, I mean, that that gets into the whole thing. Uh, there was a recent uh, thing where the. It was revealed that the U.S. military has a backup plan in case of zombie apocalypse. Um, And they said, understand, this is our job. It is our job to think through every possible (laughs) scenario. And no, we don't really think there's going to be a zombie apocalypse. But it is a useful, that is a useful thought exercise to plan for. You know, and and you pull that back to Momotaro, right? Like, you know, this is a movie saying, here's what we see coming down the pike. Here's what we we are trying to prepare you as children for, horrifically, um, and so you know it, it's it's going to be great as a soldier. It's going to be great as a sailor. It's, you know it's, it's going to be uh, wonderful, and um, uh, but we have this. Like, I think you're absolutely right. We we have this um, much scarier thing that we can only allude to um, in our final moments. Uh, that is the 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 real enemy uh, coming at us, uh, and. Uh, we sure would. Not long after. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's just all, all these kinds of things where you where you drag kids into it. There's plenty of of um, stories of German kids mm. who had gone through the youth training. Yeah. And right. were were going to the schools to learn to be the Gauleiter for Minsk, mm. the Gauleiter for Moscow. You know, they, that they were in these schools being told, you know what, in just a few years when the war's won, you guys are going to be the top rank and you're going to control these areas. And these are going to be how you're going to organize these politically. Mm-hmm. You know, and here you've got this lovely Momotaro film saying, you know, you kids, it's going to be great to be soldiers. and It's going to be great to fly planes. And it's going to be great to be in the Navy. And it's like, all you jackasses robbed these people of their future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you sold them this thing. That you know, the kids are out there singing their alphabet song and their work mm-hmm. song, and thinking about how this is going to be great. And this greater East Asian co-prosperity sphere, and everything's going to be lovely and wonderful. Except for the, all the cities are on fire, and nobody's seen any of the adult male population for like five or six years. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. everything's over. I can't be a sailor. I can't be a soldier. I can't be a pilot. I, mm-hmm. Now, what do I? What do I do? Yeah. You know, I can go to work in what remaining jobs there are because the soldiers aren't coming back. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's my hope for glory and, and pride is now just to fill in a dead man's shoes. Uh, I, I you know, mm. it, was it Tomino or uh, or Yaz who was talking about how, you know, they grew up in the in the 60s, 50s and 60s, and they grew up doing that. Right. Like they were the generation the, the post-war generation that had to find the jobs, who had who were living with the immediate after effects of the war, uh, and it's, it's why so many it was why Gundam and so many of those works are so virulently anti-war, and so you know how dare they do this? Um, and they said, you know, we we were the ones yelling at our at our at the next, the older generation saying, how could you have put us in this situation? Like what was in your heads to cause this devastation? Um, because uh, it, it was, I mean, it, it was it was apocalyptic, um, and this was part of it. Yeah, there's um, again, of course, uh, one of my favorites, um, the, the bad sleep well, the the one that's off Hamlet. There's a scene in there where the guy, the the main character, uh, Toshiro um, Fune, no, not Toshiro Mufune, one of the other Toshiro characters. Mufune, oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. Um, he's standing atop this pile of rubble next to a smokestack. It's still the remnants of a bombing campaign there of their town, and like it's actual real life. This is a real thing. Oh wow! And he's talking to his friend, who's and he's trying to get his friend to help him with his plot, and he's saying, God, "Remember right after the war when you and I were just kids and we just had those our wheelbarrows and we were just getting paid cents on the dollar to get the scrap metal out of this here yard and take it over to the recycling center, so that we could, you know." little bit of rice that night you know and that kind of thing and mm-hmm. it's just like you know that movie really does not momentarily does not prepare you for any of that yeah 
Yeah. It does, you know, and there's this, and again, the great scene in, in the in the airplane when they're they're eating the the pickled plum in the mm-hmm. in the rice, and you now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, going, well, how many of those kids watching the movie were probably sitting there with like. Yeah. I didn't have dinner tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I get exactly. fed well in the yep. military. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Which, yep. again, the airfield, hey, you like melons? You like bananas? Oh, it's like, oh, food. Mm-hmm. Military gets food given to them yep. by the locals. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Uh, um, anything else you want to talk about regarding Momotaro's Sacred Sailors and the experience thereof? It was a thing. It was a thing with a brick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah they, uh, they did some very interesting stuff. It's, mm-hmm. it's again, given the limited supplies that they had by, by 45, I, I'm amazed that they had the where, the ability, ability to actually yeah. animate mm-hmm. anything, mm-hmm. that they had yeah. any paper to draw on, that they had anything <laughs> to do. So. Actually, there is something to be said for that. You're right. Uh, I mean, they... They did not have yeah. disposable forestry in, in great number in Japan mm-hmm. to make a lot of paper. Yeah. So they were bringing in a lot of paper, you know, timber mm. in from Korea, from China, from anywhere else they could get it. And by the time you get to the end of the war, I think I saw something today was talking about the U.S. submarine services accounted for 60 percent of losses of Japanese commercial uh. Uh, vessels, mm. which meant right. choking yeah. off. Food, raw materials, timber. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? And much less celluloid. You know, where yeah, do you get no that? Joke. You know? Yeah, no joke. Actual cells. It's, yeah, it's it, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a thing. And it's, uh, um, it's, you're absolutely right. It is a remarkable achievement. It is, it's in some moments a gorgeous film. Um, it is, it is, the technical skills are definitely there for, especially the nature stuff. Um, but it's just, it's just tainted in those, those Some, ways. some of the movements, you know, like the, the part with the, the black ships, mm. some of the movements are, even if it's rotoscoped, it's yeah. still, it's not like Flowers of Evil, where it just makes <laughs> me claw, claw my eyes out. You know what I mean? It just, mm-hmm. it just, you know, makes me think of that, the guy walking down the hallway with his sword oh, and yeah. just how fluid is as he's moving and it's like mm-hmm. guys you know what you were doing with this you know you you obviously you know by the time you get to this point 42 into 45 mm-hmm. you've really crafted this the movements are much better the paratrooping mm-hmm. even if you're using german newsreels to get that jumping motion mm-hmm. you've still animated it yeah Absolutely. you know what i mean and it's done well despite mm-hmm. the fact you know like when they're loading the plane Despite the fact that you've got just generic figures walking in to go into the mm-hmm. plane, their mm-hmm. load sequence, not necessarily mm-hmm. their walking sequence, but their load sequence getting into the plane mm-hmm. is done well. Yeah. The there's a lot of yeah. repeat movement in the parachute packing. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's a it's a yeah. loop movement. Mm-hmm. But you've still got some great parts where they're tying off the oh, parachute yeah. line. Mm-hmm. Where it's you guys were doing a great job with this. Yeah. And what a crappy time to be a good animator <laughs> yeah yeah exactly you know? it's there we go um what more can be said yeah it's uh so that's Momotaro. um definitely a a film worth knowing about and a, and a film being aware of um and a film worth watching probably once in your life um i, I don't know how much more you would you would you would do than that but that is that is that 